Welcome everybody to another very exciting list to do. One I may not ever be able to do again, depending how long this whole YouTube thing lasts or society or, you know, the apocalypse. I don't know. The best books of the decade. Assuming I make it to 2030 as a YouTuber, another one of these lists could happen. But for now, we are going to be doing the best of the decade from 2010 to 2020. What defined this era for the fantasy genre? It's a good question and one I think will be hotly contested. This is my take on it of what I think will be most remembered about fantasy during this time for the next millennia. So what's important to keep in mind is I'm going for fantasy books here. So if there's sci fantasy, they might not make the cut because it's important to me that they're more heavily fantasy than science fiction here. So something like Red Rising, which has elements across the board, but is certainly more science fiction than anything else, will not make the cut. And before you comment your rage for not seeing your favorite pick here in this list, please remember this is of specifically this decade. So if I did not pick something, check when it was released, because I'm already expecting someone to be angry that Name of the Wind's not here, but Name of the Wind was put out in 2007 so it doesn't belong here. So without any further ado, here are my top picks for what the fantasy genre will be remembered for and what defined this era for fantasy, starting with A Memory of Light. You all knew this was going to be on my list. It came out January 8th of 2013, and it marked the end of an era, honestly, for fantasy. One of the cornerstones of the genre, the Wheel of Time, had its conclusion. And if the author was still alive, Robert Jordan, we may have actually gotten more entries here. But Brandon Sanderson, the man who finished it, has spoken vaguely about possibly continuing any of those ideas, but it doesn't seem likely. It never seems like to be something he's eager to do because the story was ended so well. And that's honestly why A Memory of Light makes the cut. If it had been a disappointing ending, it would not be here. But with one of the Goliaths finding its end in this decade, it will certainly be something that when people think of fantasy in the 2010s, comes to mind. Thank you, Brandon Sanderson, for doing such an incredible job. And of course, we will continue to miss you, Robert Jordan. A lot of things mentioned here on this list show very clear influence from the Wheel of Time, and that's something important to keep in mind moving on. Now, while we had the end of an era for fantasy starting off pretty early in this decade, now we have pretty much the duh pick, a series that a lot of people will probably think defines this decade because it got its start here, and it is without a doubt the critically and commercially most successful series of this decade so far, and that is The Way of Kings. I'm picking the first book in the Stormlight Archive here, obviously, because it made such a tremendous wave upon its release. Released August 31st of 2010, A Way of Kings showed that this decade and the genre itself had a lot of gas left in the tank. It does a lot to push the boundaries of fantasy further beyond what we've ever seen before while still being an entry for the genre that stays incredibly true to fantasy's roots. Prioritizing things like characterization and mental health and the ramifications of the horrors happening on the pages while not buying into the grim dark fad, which is very prevalent in the 2010s for a while. Brandon Sanderson is the only author who will appear twice on this list, and honestly the 2010s might be just remembered as Brandon's decade because he has been such a powerhouse for the genre only outmatched by George R. R. Martin due to his success of Game of Thrones. Speaking of which, the next entry for this list is the only A Song of Ice and Fire book that has had a release in this decade, and it is A Dance with Dragons, released July 12th of 2011. I know some people might not like this pick because there's growing resentment towards Martin within the genre for not finishing the series yet. It has literally been since this book in 2011 since we got A Song of Ice and Fire entry. That being said, it is hard to dispute the fact that George R. R. Martin's influence will be tremendous, and this book showed him coming back to his story and hitting. Not the hardest, it's not the best of the A Song of Ice and Fire books, but not being the best and still being a good A Song of Ice and Fire book puts Martin head and shoulders above most of his peers for the genre. A Song of Ice and Fire will have an influence, whether you like it or not, for decades of what's to come in fantasy. And A Dance with Dragons is still a remarkable book. And I like that we had at least a one A Song of Ice and Fire book that did come out in this decade because it gives us the readers a bit of a reminder that he's still here, he's still putting things out, and more is to come. I actually do believe we might get the next A Song of Ice and Fire book sooner rather than later due to the rumblings we've been seeing from Martin's camp with chapter releases and things along those lines. And now that the show's over, 
I'm hoping he's focusing a lot more. So, so far with A Memory of Light, we've had the, you know I'm gonna pick it pick. With Away of Kings, we had the duh for the decade pick. With Martin, we had the he's still in here doing his thing pick theoretically. For my next pick, I'm going to have the breakout entry for an author. It's not their first, but with the fifth season, N.K. Jemsen exploded onto the scene. She is now, without a doubt, one of the most respected and noted names within the genre, and that is because this book did such an incredible job of just being different, standing out, while being while still being such a pure and well-realized fantasy story at its core, with a brilliant magic system, incredible means to tell a story. M.K. Jimson is someone who is now respected pretty much across the board as a storyteller. Now, shamefully, I have not finished this series. I've read the first and I'm in the middle of the second book, but I think the first is one of the most brilliant fantasy stories I have seen in a long time. And it's absolutely worth note because it also reflects many other rises we've seen in this decade. Alternative takes on fantasy, pushing it to places we've never seen, but we'll get more into that with future picks on this list. But yes, the fifth season will certainly be a book that people, when they come back to this decade, will pull out for the fantasy genre. Next up, we need to address the elephant in the room. The 2010s saw a tremendous rise for the grimdark genre. Could be chalked up as a fad, but there were such strong entries for that subgenre of fantasy that it would almost be wrong to do so. Grimdark is very valid, and while it can certainly be abused and done wrong, it's not by any means something that should be dismissed, and there are incredible stories taking place within this type of setting. Now, for this pick, I'm not going to deny that I didn't love this book. It wasn't one I want to prop up and put super high for the fantasy genre as a whole, but I will not deny its success within fantasy and the fact that there are diehard fans who will continue to promote this for a long, long time, and it is a very good representation of the grimdark subgenre, and that is Prince of Thorns. I didn't love this book. I also don't typically love Grimdark that much, so it lines up well. And I do believe in terms of Grimdark, this is a tremendous execution of a lot of the ideas the subgenre allows authors to take on. If I have read the sequels, I may have picked one of those because I've been told they do improve on the concepts explored within the first book, but for now, just take it as the Prince of Thorns series, or the Thorns Broken Empire Broken Empire series is the pick I will go for here. I'm willing to admit that my tastes are not going to be the reflection of the decade, and this entry is a prime example of that. While I absolutely adore Mark Lawrence as an author, I think his Book of the Ancestor series is leagues above, it doesn't quite reflect what's happening in the genre as well as Prince of Thorns did for this decade. Next up, I wanted to pick a fully completed fantasy series that started and ended within this decade and is very reflective of a lot of the things that were popular at the time, and there was no better series that met the criteria for that than Lightbringer. It also gave us as fantasy fans hope that a fantasy epic could be finished in a timely manner, and this certainly was. And from The Lightbringer, I'm going to go with the first book, The Black Prism, released August 25th, 2010. In terms of its handling of magic system and character, Lightbringer is extraordinarily reflective of what's popular and readers are in demand of right now. Heavy emphasis on flawed yet relatable characters is at the forefront of how Brent Reeks writes his protagonists and antagonists. A magic system that is complex and on the harder side of things things definitely what's big for this decade, and unquestionably epic fantasy. Again, showing this genre has a whole lot to say even in the 2010s. Lightbringer and The Black Prism specifically can also be seen as very progressive for the genre. I don't mean that in the political sense, I mean in terms of evolving what fantasy is from its roots. There isn't a ton of tropes from classic fantasy still existing within Lightbringer. Instead, we see a lot of new ideas, not just from the technological progression, but from the themes that are being tackled here as well as bringing in elements from outside sources we don't normally see, such as Greek mythology. The days of Christian Europe being just the go-to touch point for all fantasy are dying out faster than ever, especially in the last 10 years that has been obvious. And Lightbringer evolves from there spectacularly. While there are still some Christian themes taken, there are still some influences from medieval Europe, no doubt. We're pushing beyond that. We're expanding as a genre from our roots while still paying respects. And I think Lightbringer is a brilliant example of that from beginning to end. A series that was handled incredibly well from the author who I think did a substantial level up Brent Weeks from his previous series to this one. Next up, I wanted to put one in here that I feel like was the slept on series of the decade. Now, it's still commercially successful, but doesn't get nearly the level of praise or respect from fantasy readers to this day. I still think it deserves. And for me, that's a book released October 8th of 2013. The Lies of Locke Lamora. 
The Gentleman Bastard sequence for me is the slept on story of the decade. Yes, it has had some fairly substantial success, obviously, but not nearly on the level I feel it deserves. For the decade, in terms of overall characterization of personality, I have a hard time thinking of any authors even close to Scott Lynch and his absolutely incredible relationship building between his two main characters. The Gentleman Bastards also has, in my opinion, the best atmosphere of the decade, the crimey, criminal, disgusting world we live this story through. Locke and Jean are brilliant. The story itself is original. You're not following necessarily the good guys. They are gentlemen bastards. And without a doubt, this is the one I hope when people come back to this decade looking for something that maybe didn't reach the heights it deserves, a hidden gem, this is the book I hope they pick up. Or I hope maybe it just kind of explodes and becomes as popular as A Way of Kings in the next few years. Maybe. That, that also would be a great, you know, alternative, awesome way for it to go. Next up, I have what I'm calling the underdog pick. Because while the series is just getting started this decade, it's probably, in my opinion, going to absolutely detonate within the next few years and be a massive name within the fantasy genre. And that is because of its outstanding work with setting, its embracing of a current trend in fantasy of going into outside non-typical European cultures and putting them at the forefront and the sheer epic scale of things along with some remarkable character work. And that is The Poppy War. I really liked the first book, but the second book sold me on the premise and series as a whole. The Dragon Republic was great, but it could not have been as brilliant as it was without the foundations built from the book that came before it, The Poppy War. This is historical fiction fantasy, heavily inspired by China's history and the horrendous events that took place within that nation. This story just has an alternative twist there. Empire building, inside and outside of the land this story takes place in. It is brutal, it's hard to read at times, Times. But in terms of setting and where it pulls its inspirations from, I can think of almost nothing this decade that does such a good job of realizing something that truly fits in the label of epic fantasy, but is very different in terms of how it feels for you, the reader. A lot of people have a lot of different predictions for where this series is going to go, and with every month that goes by, I see more and more chatter about it happening online. I would love to see this trend within fantasy continue. More cultures, more mythologies, more different parts of the world being pulled from to craft these fantastical stories, and the Poppy War is helping that become the standard for the next decade. That's one of the big things I want to see for the next 10 years of fantasy. Break away from the European roots while I still love them and will continue to read those stories forever. There's just so much more mythology. There's so much more history for us to pull from. Well, A Song of Ice and Fire has done an amazing job from pulling from specific events in European history. We can go so much further and let's continue to promote and do that by enjoying stories like the Poppy War, which are true masterpieces doing the same thing we're seeing the fantasy genre has been doing for so long, just in a different way. I recommend this one so much. Go ahead and check it out. Now, before I get into my final pick of this decade, which is the book that gives me the most hope for the next 10 years of fantasy, I want to go ahead and dive into some honorable mentions, things I either didn't read or I'm aware are very, very good, but I just didn't see a reason for them to be the reflective choice of the decade here. So I'm going to have a bit of a montage go by of just stories. I want to take my cap off to show some respect, but just didn't quite make the this is the decade of the 2010s yet starting now. And so for my final pick, the one that for me is telling me the next decade of fantasy is going to be as strong as the last, if not even stronger, as we continue to grow and break away from the themes that have been rehashed for the last century. It's going to be the book published September 17th of 2019. That's right. It's a very recent release. And that is A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie. Now, the first law series did not start this decade. In fact, we only got really standalone novels for this story taking place in this decade. But A Little Hatred is the mark of a new series starting within one of the best fantasy series currently being written hands down, no question. Very few will argue against that. Joe Abercrombie is Lord Grimdark himself because the fad that is Grimdark, he has breaking out beyond. He uses this 
darker setting, this really tone and themes of a more nihilistic view of humanity to tell what is such a real story about people who are not overly dark, but makes sense within their setting. And I'm very excited to see Joe just get better and better and see this world grow and continue to live on into the next decade. Same goes for several of the stories here that are still within the works. And same goes for all the authors who are still alive, who put out work this decade, who are gonna continue to do so for books we love in the next. So these are my picks for the most important fantasy books to come out within the 2010s. Let me know in the comments down below, what are your favorite books for the 2010s in terms of their impact in the fantasy genre, where you hope to see the genre go in the next 10 years and maybe actually indicative of the evolution we're gonna continue to see. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here and have a good one, y'all. Peace.